Hi, I'm John Moolis and welcome to another one of my videos where I talk about my experiences in the gainer scene and how I was able to leave it behind and lead a normal fit and healthy lifestyle. Now, the gainer scene has a lot of myths about it within, especially within the gay community. Um, they try and char characterise it as being a fetish. You know, that if you're attracted to chubby men or men with, with bellies, beer bellies, whatever, that that is a sexual, uh, a, a sexual fetish. Now, it might be a sexual fetish if you're the third party, if you're attracted to this sort of person. But if you're doing it yourself, if you're deliberately trying to get fat and trying to be obese, that isn't a fetish. That is a mental illness. That's all it is. It's not a fetish. It's not, it's not anything else. Now, within the gay community, they have a lot of this nonsense about cuddly bears and a lot of this cutesy imagery about chubby and all that sort of thing. That sort of thing is dangerous because it, it leads to a state of mind where people think that, that no damage is done by getting fat, that, that they can get fat with impunity and, and there is no harm done. The fact is that there is a lot of harm done, that there is a lot of harm done to your health, a lot of harm done to your self-esteem. I mean, you might not know it, but the fact is that the, the image that you project to the outside world is very important. It is the way other people see you. It is the way you you interact with society. And it is a, a, the way you adjust to the people around you and how you are able to live your life. And if you go out and deliberately try and be obese, try and look as as objectionable as possible, then you have a problem. You have a big problem. And the fact is that when you're in the, the gainer lifestyle, you have this sort of rejection mentality that you um, the media is telling you that, that, that you look offensive, that, that you are offensive, that you're unhealthy and everything else. And I felt it myself. You, you, you develop this sort of um, like, like a, a teenager rebelling against his parents. You rebel against this sort of thing. You have this, this mental state where it's, it's us against them. Um, for example, I can remember when I was um, in the gainer lifestyle, 12 years. I, I call it my 12-year lost weekend, you know. Um, there was... Stories of um, the obesity crisis was just stepping up. I mean, um, I, I believe it started with the internet, with computers, people sitting down in front of computer screens and the home theatres and the plasma TVs of the, um, the decade of the noughties. That brought all of this obesity crisis about. And um, during that period, there were a lot of stories on the TV news about the obesity crisis. And they always used to have um, film clips of people walking in the street with their heads cut off. You know, they'd, they'd, have, they'd film everybody from the neck down, you know. And I reacted against this. I can remember on this website that I was involved with, Belly Builders, that I used to write posts saying, you know, I'm sick and tired of seeing these stories. I'm sick and tired of seeing the same old bit of film showing people with their heads cut off, you know, walking in the street and everything. And I even had a blog. I had a blog back in 2007, um, towards the end of my time as a gainer, in which I, I actually put this down on there. I'm sick and tired of these stories. I'm sick and tired of hearing about this and everything. But the fact is that um, after a while, it did sort of sink into me that, that this was a dangerous lifestyle, it was unhealthy, that people did look at you with disdain. And let's face it, I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff about body image and all that sort of thing, but it is an important factor of your psychological makeup. 
the way you see yourself, the way you project yourself to the outside world, body image, that sort of thing. It is a big part of life. And if you have a poor body image, if you have a poor physique, if you are fat and unhealthy, and you walk around and people see you like that, they form an opinion about you. And it, it, the fact is that being overweight and having a gut is harmful in employment. It is harmful, you can't do your job. There are cases of people working in the mines who have actually been sacked because their gut gets in the way of their, their work. You know, they can't perform their duties properly. And, and, and you have to, um, uh, a couple of dogs outside, you're probably hearing that. I'm, it's interrupting my train of thought. But anyway, and, and like I said, you have to be fit and healthy in order to hold down a job, most jobs. I mean, I've seen taxi drivers around town who are really fat and obese. I mean, every, every time I see one of these taxi drivers, I, I, <laughs> I go to another cab. But um, I talked about this website, Belly Builders, about the postings on it. And another disturbing aspect of that, that site were the profiles of, of people now, when the site started in about the first 10 years of the site, you could put up a profile of yourself with several photos of yourself and you'd try and make yourself look as fat as possible. I mean, it became sort of a contest amongst the members of Belly Builders and you'd have things like favourite movie, favourite food, all of this sort of thing. And... and you know, other guys would look at it, and probably some females, but it was mainly men, would look at it. And of course, you know, you know what they'd be doing to the, with those pictures when they were looking at it. I don't think I need to elaborate further. I think you get the picture. And the other thing, and uh, after a while, of course, those profiles were taken down because the website and the web owner experienced financial difficulties in keeping that website going so all those profiles and all of that you know information about the um the fattest the, the the foods to eat to get as fat as possible all of that was taken down thank goodness i mean my profile i had my profile up there as the keg with legs and i had um i changed it about three times with different photos and that, I updated it. That was taken down, but unfortunately, as we all know, nothing ever dies on the internet. It's, it's probably lurking in some server somewhere in Silicon Valley in the US, um, dormant, ready to be called up at a moment's notice. I just, I just wish that, like I've said in the last video, I just wish that I could wipe that whole period out of my life completely. That's 12 lost years that I'll never get back. It was, it was just, it, it was terrible. And at the time, you know, I mean, I thought I was doing really well. I mean, I, I used to cut off my singlets and so that my gut would hang, hang out. And that, and I'd walk, walk around thinking I was making some sort of a statement. I mean, I can remember when we went to a family wedding in the year 2000 up in Newcastle. And I live inland, uh, away from beaches, and we were there staying on Newcastle Beach. And I was walking up and down New Newcastle Beach, wearing a pair of Speedos with the big gut hanging out, thinking I was making some sort of a statement, thinking that everybody was looking at me with respect. I mean, that is just how distorted your mental state of being becomes that you think everybody is, is looking at you and admiring you but everybody is looking at you and and uh, you know having pity on you they're really feeling sorry for you i mean i can remember some of the looks i got when i went to the shopping centers dressed like that they just looked at me with horror i mean i walk around now dressed like this during the summer you know and people look at me totally differently i mean people people sort of have a di different attitude towards me. I, I've noticed that since I 
gave away the gainer scene and became fit and healthy that people really do have a respect for you for, for doing that. But the whole gainer scene, this whole get fat movement, the whole fat pride thing, it is bunk. It is just garbage. I saw a thing on A Current Affair a few months ago about fat pride. Fat people talking about fat pride. I mean, come on. You can feel pity towards those people for being trapped in a lifestyle that they that they are too lazy to get out of or they can't get out of. But pride? I mean, come on. And I saw Dr. Phil um, a, a, a couple of weeks ago. They had a couple of, of gainers there on there. Uh, two women. Two women. And they were there saying that it was possible to be fit and healthy and be a gainer too, to be obese and and at the same time be fit and healthy. And Dr. Phil said, screamed at them, no, it's not. And they kept saying this and Dr. Phil had to scream this out to them three or four times over. And I don't think the message even sunk in after that because you are so wrapped up in this whole thing, this whole gainer lifestyle, that you lose all sense of perspective. It really is, as I said earlier, a mental illness. I mean, there were posts on this Belly Builders site from people saying that I want someone to feed me to the point of immobility. You know, they actually wanted someone to come over and keep feeding them fatty food and everything until they were immobile, until they, they were so fat that they couldn't move. I mean, that is just extraordinary. When I think about it, that I mean, at the time, I, every, every morning, I'd turn on the internet and I'd read the message board and I'd see these posts, and I didn't think anything of it. But looking back now, I can realise, I, I realise just how terrible it, it all was. Just, you know, it, it really was bizarre. And... I've been doing a bit of thinking about this whole gainer movement, the, the get fat movement. It reminds me of um, that business that was going on in the gay community a few years back about bug catchers and gift givers. How you had these men going around trying to get men with AIDS to have sex with them and infect them with the HIV virus because they thought that being HIV positive was somehow glamorous or desirable, you know, and or liberating. And, you know, and they were they were putting things on, on hookup sites and dating gay dating sites, seeking HIV positive men to have sex with them and to convert them. And how they were having all of these conversion parties to try and, and convert men to being HIV positive. This, this gainer scene is exactly the same. I mean, you've got something which is hated by people, which people look down on, which is undesirable, being painted as glamorous and, and desirable and, and something to be proud of. It, it really is extraordinary. I mean, I, I, and I've, I've tried to alert the media about this whole gainer movement, about how dangerous it is. Uh, I think it's worse than the anorexic movement with the with the anorexic sites because it the gainer scene has flown completely under the radar that the the ana sites the ana anorexic movement receives quite a lot of publicity. Um, you see stories like Ray Martin does on a current affair about girls who who were anorexic who have left the lifestyle behind and who have survived on the other end. Uh, but you don't see any stories about the gainer lifestyle, about the get fat movement. And I personally have tried to alert the media about it. I wrote an article a few months back for the Canberra Times about my experiences in, in the gainer movement. I sent it to the Canberra Times. I mean, they published a story about the gainer movement. And when I saw the story in the paper, I thought, oh, this is good finally getting some publicity. I thought the other media would catch on to it. 
that, that we'd see a series of articles in the newspapers and the media about it and it would get some publicity and would alert the public to the dangers of it and hopefully deter people from getting involved in it and, and succumbing to it. But unfortunately, nothing happened after that article was printed. That article was, was printed and none of the other media followed it up. You know, and it, it, was, it was very disappointing because I really do think that this, this whole gainer thing needs a lot more publicity because of the danger that it poses and, and the, the danger that it poses to people's mental health and their physical health and their well-being. Anyway, um, I've come to the end of this segment of the film, of, of this YouTube feature. Um, I'm going to demonstrate now one of the exercises that I do at the gym. Now, I don't have any weights in the house, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, a jackknife press-up. Uh, I'm going to go into the kitchen because the kitchen has a, a, a tiled floor. It's better to do it on a tiled floor than a carpeted floor. I mean, at the gym, I do this every second day at the gym in, in the change room after I do my workout. I mean, a lot of the guys in the change room accuse me of being a show-off because of that. But the only reason is that there are high benches. The benches in the change room are higher than the benches in the actual gym. And you've got the tiled floor. In the gym, you've got a rubber floor or a, or a carpeted floor. And, and so it's better to do these exercises in the change room at the end of the workout. Uh, you know, and of course, you know, as, as you've seen from my YouTube videos, I am a show-off. I love showing off. I mean, that's why I'm here on YouTube. And um, I walk, like to walk around after the, the gym at the shopping centres dressed like this so that people can see just how fit and healthy that I am. Anyway, I'm coming to the end of this segment and stand by now for me demonstrating the jackknife press up and I hope you find it to be entertaining I hope you gain inspiration from it goodbye from this part and I'll see you around well well here I am in the kitchen I'm not in the lounge room I'm in the kitchen because there's better lighting here in the kitchen so here I'll start the jackknife press-ups that I do every second day in the gym. Okay, here he goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Who are we? <laughs> yeah, pretty good, eh? So that's, that's the push-ups. I do 45 each day at the gym, every second day at the gym. And so that's it. Okay, stand by for the next segment where I'll talk further about this. Well, there you go. Pretty good, eh? Anyway, in closing this video, I've come to the part of the, the show which I know you've all been looking forward to that you re really want me to do. You want me to take off my shirt again? Okay, well, here goes. Yeah, pretty good, eh? 
<laughs> do it, I'll do, it, do a few muscle poses. Yeah. <laughs> now if, you, if you're wondering, if you think I like doing this, taking off my shirt and all that, you're damn right, I love it. Anyway, um, coming to the end of this video, all I can say once again is that leaving the gamer scene behind and getting involved in health and fitness and bodybuilding again was the best thing I ever did. If you are overweight, if you are obese at the moment, all I can say is leave it behind. It's not hard, just get involved in exercise, do healthy eating, cut out the junk food, cut out the soft drink, cut out the, the fast food and all of that. And, and there are easy, cheap meals that you can, get, you can do. You can just you can, um, do chops and steaks and that sort of thing, salads and all of that. You don't have to go on specific diet foods, just healthy eating, cut back on your portions and all that sort of thing. Anyway, that's about it for, for, for my bit. Anyway, um, no, I'm not going to take off my pants in this video. I think it would be inappropriate for the subject matter of this video if I did. If you want to see me without my pants on, virtually naked, I've got a series of videos on YouTube called Sweet Notes Classic Series. They're karaoke videos where I do karaoke versions of, of classic hits, classic pop hits. So you can see me virtually naked in those clips, but I'll keep my pants on for this video. Anyway, um, whether I do other videos in this series, I'll, I'll think about it, but I think I've covered everything in these two videos, but I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit more thinking, I'll do a bit more re recall of, of what I went through during those 12 years in the Gainer scene, that, that 12 year lost weekend, and I'll probably come back with another video. I'll, 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 actually, I'll come back with another video and tell you some of the food I ate during that period when I was massively overeating, and, and the, the dietary disasters that, that I was involved in. Anyway, as I said, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it educational, I hope you found it enlightening, and I hope you found it inspirational, and I hope to see you again somewhere down the track. Goodbye for now, farewell, and, I, and I'll see you later. Bye.